What's up, Divas and Devo? So you guys already know what time it is. It's Real Talk Wednesday, and it's your girl. So it is really late in the evening. Not that late, but it's 6 o'clock. Normally, I do these during the day. And I was doing this hair video today, and let me tell y'all, why is my bun, it just keeps going to the side. Like, it's starting to really irritate me. I don't know, but this bun has been giving me an issue all day. You cannot be in here doing that, squeaking your toy. Don't do that. That's rude. So, yeah, I have been basically doing a video all day. Um, well, not all day, but just doing other stuff, too. So, this is a yakky, a, a kinky straight um, lace front pancake. It's a kinky straight lace front, and it's by Ion Hair. I will post the video up soon. I did dye it and stuff, but let me tell y'all, this bun is really starting to piss me off. Why is always somebody? There was something I wanted to tell y'all, but I cannot even remember for the life of me what it was. Um, don't you hate when you cannot remember? You want to tell somebody something, but you cannot remember. Well, for the life of me, I cannot remember what I wanted to tell y'all. Um, anyway, if it comes to mind, I'll definitely let you guys know. But, you know, so we're just going to get into this real talk then because I cannot remember for the life of me. But if you guys have a real talk that you would like for me to go ahead and talk about, you can always send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Make sure to put in the subject line, real talk, as well as that if you want to change the names of your characters or the people you're talking about, you know what I'm saying? You can go ahead and tell me, April, you know, I changed the names or whatever, because, you know, you might not want to write them talking about them like you know i don't really even be caring if you know i'm talking about you but you know you might want to change the names up but if you don't tell me then 99.9 of the time i am going to change the names for you okay so yes you guys let's get into this real talk i swear i wish i could remember what i had to tell you guys all right you guys so i'm gonna do two today because this one was like um, well they're both really important but this one had to do what this is like really like this is a really easy one, so I'm going to just do two. Hey, April. Hope all is well. My name is Kelly, not my real name. Pancake, I wanted to write you today to get some help about my teeth. I have been watching you for a while, and I know you have had a lot of dental work done. I'm so afraid of the dentist, and I have been told I need lots of work done, but I am so afraid of what they will tell me is wrong with my teeth. It's been a year since I was told, and I need to... <clears throat> Excuse me. It's been a year since I was told I needed to have some extractions done. And finally, I scheduled a consultation for March 5th. I was told my teeth are in bad shape from not properly caring for them. I am a grown 35-year-old woman with jacked up teeth. I feel as if I should be ashamed. How do I get past the embarrassment to get the proper care I need? I'm afraid my teeth will fall out and I am too cute to not have teeth. How did you get the courage to move forward with the process? Also, money has been an issue as well for me. I am planning to use some of my tax refund for some of the work, but I am afraid I may not be able to pay for everything. I guess I'm looking for some words of encouragement to help me through it all. I can't even sleep at night because I worry about my teeth constantly. Any advice will be helpful to me. Thank you. Girl. Kelly. So basically, Kelly is going through mouth issues. Her teeth. Her teeth are in bad shape. She needs some extractions done. She didn't been to the dentist over a year ago and they done told her that she needs, you know, some serious work done. She needs to get her teeth in order and she's scared to go. She's embarrassed to go because of the condition that her teeth are in. And how did I get over the hurdle? You know what I'm saying? The embarrassment of going to the dentist. First of all, let me tell you something, Kelly. I was embarrassed, um, but I wasn't, I never was embarrassed to go to the dentist. Um, I was just embarrassed to be, I would just be embarrassed to smile and embarrassed to talk. So when you guys would see me do like videos and you would see like my still pictures, I would never smile. Like today I don't smile as much. Like I don't show my teeth as much as I should because I'm so used to not showing them. But I would be embarrassed, you know, when people would say things on my videos about my crooked teeth or the gap in my teeth, or, you know, I would just be embarrassed to smile. And even now when I look at like my old pictures or like my older videos from before I got my teeth fixed, I look at my teeth and I look at my video and then I look at my teeth and 
to me now today, it looks to me even worse because my teeth have been fixed. So when I look back at those old videos and old pictures, I just kind of get like really embarrassed and really disgusted with myself because I have let it go so far. And the more, the longer that you let your teeth go, the more money it's going to cost you. And so like for me, that was like an issue with money um, and, and also like just like money basically was for the, was like my issue. And so the first dentist that I went to, I, it was, I was referred to it by a friend of mine. And, you know, my first visit out here to the dentist, he was not really nice to me at all. Like his bedside manner was horrible. Like when I first, the first visit, he was like, you have, your teeth are in horrible shape. You know, basically he said it in such a, a manner that it hurt my feelings. And normally I don't let like strangers hurt my feelings or get me that upset to where I was crying. And I was literally in the dental chair crying and like his assistant you know, they came in and they talked to me and they apologized for him. And, you know, I just felt still like, I felt like, damn, my fucking mouth is real shitty. And here it is, this dentist is saying that. And like in the dominion that he said, it, it made me feel like I had the worst mouth in the world. And like, you know, the money is not cheap for, to get your teeth fixed, unfortunately. <clears throat> and it was like, my main concern was like my two front teeth that had just basically spread from getting extractions. So that's why I had the gap. I was never born with it. My teeth were like that. They formed like that over the years. So I didn't want it to get any worse. And plus, even though it was a gap, it wasn't even like a straight gap. Like it wasn't, the gap wasn't in the middle. It was on the side. So it made it even worse for me. And um, when he said that to me, it took like a lot out of me not to just get up and walk out and go off on him. But, you know, I continued on and, you know, they apologized to me for him. And, you know, I just was like, basically, fuck him. Because the next time he say some smart shit to me, that's when I'm going to go for his juggle. Like, I was dead ready for the next time he say some smart out of the fucking pocket shit to me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go off on this man. So, you know, I dealt with it. and. I um, was told what was wrong with my teeth. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like my teeth would hurt me every night, like constantly. I have, I would have to take like all types of antibiotics and aspirins and pain relievers because I would be in so much pain. And then it would get to the point where I would just be eating something and like, I would feel like a part of my tooth break off and it will always be in the back. It would never be in the front. And I just felt like to myself, like, damn, if my teeth start falling off or breaking off in the front, I'm going to be really screwed because, you know, even though it's in the back, it's not so bad. No one can see it. But when it starts moving towards the front, then I'm screwed. So, you know what I'm saying? I, um, I went back and I found out what was wrong with my teeth, like basically what I needed to get done. And the first thing that I got done was the fillings. You know, I got, um, four or five fillings in one day. And, you know, that was $1,100 that I paid out of pocket. And um, I went back and I got like uh, extractions. Um, I did get one here um, because it was just hurting so bad that I just couldn't take it anymore. And they offered me like to get a root canal, but the pain was just so unbearable that I just couldn't even go through with the root canal. I just had rather just him take it out. It was cheaper. Just take it out. And no one's going to see it. So you don't see it unless I show you. And then I do have one on this side too. Right here. Where it's, it's missing. I call it, you know, I call it my redneck only because, you know, hey, it is what it is. And I just, I, it makes me, if I call it my redneck, then I'm cool with it. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, I got to live with it. As long as I got these up here, then honey, I'm good. But I'm going to tell you what, like, you don't really want to prolong the process of getting your teeth fixed because I don't really have a whole mouthful of teeth anymore. Like I don't have no teeth up here. Okay. All on the top up here. I don't have no teeth in the back. So like you can really see like my face was, it's a little bit slimmer on this side only because I don't have no teeth right here. And then I have like the missing ones here and then some on the bottom missing. So I've had to have, you know, they weren't, they're not even missing. Um, some of them are missing and some of them have had work. So I have um, crowns in the back of my mouth on the bottom and on the top. And the thing about the crowns is this, I hate, 
I hate them because they're a replacement tooth and that's great. Uh, great. Hey, but they are so hard to eat with. So when I'm chewing and being that I may be missing one up here and one up here, my teeth are not touching because there's some missing in certain spots. And then there's some missing down here. So like the teeth that are down here and the teeth that are up here, they're not touching each other. They're spaced apart. So it's like, I'm kind of like, you know, I have nothing to bite on back here. And when I do chew, I look like an old person that has their teeth out. Like, you know how the old people take their teeth out at night? And then their their face is kind of like they chew like. That's how I have to chew because that's just how I have to chew because of my crowns in my teeth. They're they're just, they're not my own teeth. So it makes it kind of like weird to eat with. And then on top of that, you know what I'm saying? I've had like so many issues. Like I have gotten like, bad infections, you know, and from bad infections in your mouth, you can definitely die from, you can die from, like, I have been on Percocet, um, for my teeth because I had a bad fever and I thought I was going to die. I have had, um, ulcers. I think that's what they call at the roof of abscess, excuse me, abscesses. Um, at the roof of my mouth because I've had an abscess in my tooth. And what happens is an abscess can put a pimple on your roof of your mouth and it's disgusting, like, or on your gums. It is disgusting because what is a pimple? It's full of pus. So if you prolong your teeth getting fixed, these are the issues that you're going to have. Plus your breath can stink. If you let your teeth rot, your breath can stink. And like, I've never been told that my breath stink, but it's, I'm just always like so serious about stuff and so just like concerned that I was constantly either eating peppermints or chewing on gum because I just was so like, you know, paranoid that my breath would stink because my teeth weren't fixed. You know what I'm saying? So it's like all different types of things and you really don't want to lose your teeth because let me tell you, the more you prolong it, the more money it's going to cost. So I would say, get yourself on a plan. There are so many different dentists out here now that do these different type of plans like the dentist that I go to out here in Arizona and there's a lot of them all over I've even seen this at Walmart okay Walmart even has this it's a dental plan and what I did and it's the same exact type of plan as at my dentist office you pay to become a member so a member you only pay one time and I only had to pay $150 and if I put someone on like, like say one of my family members said they wanted to be part of the dental program, they would only have to pay $75 and you only pay once. And what that does for you is when you become that member and you only pay $150, cause that ain't shit. Everything, all their services are 50% off. So like, I don't pay full price for nothing. Like if I go get my teeth clean, if I go get an extraction, if I go get a filling, if I get my crowns, if I get, when I get my um, partials, even, you know, saying root canals, all, everything is covered 50% off. So it's not like you pay every month. You just pay one time membership and whatever packet you choose. So like, I had the first packet that I chose, I had to get, I think I got 12 crowns in my mouth um, or nine crowns and um, I think like eight root canals, um, two extractions, three fillings, and um, a partial. Well, the partial wasn't even included, so not the partial. And all of that, I paid 5000 like over $5,000. Uh, it was almost like $6,000. But it was really supposed to be more than that. But the girl that charged me, she's supposed to charge me the half price, but she charged me half of the half price. So she kind of like screwed it up, but they had to honor it. But normally the package is like around $10,000. But you, there, there's different packages that you can choose from. Or if you don't want to do a package, you can just do as you go along. Like, oh, I'm going to get this done today or this done tomorrow. But everything is going to be 50% off. And I've seen those type of dental plans at Walmart and like major, major dentals. 
dentists out here. And I'm not really sure how it works in like other states, but I'm pretty sure that that's just not out here in Arizona. You know what I'm saying? Because the dentist, the dental care has become really popular. But you know, how I got over my fear and embarrassment too of going to the dentist is because I didn't want to be walking around with no teeth in my mouth, like in the front. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like to replace your, your front teeth is like hard because who wants to wait for their new teeth to come in when they ain't got none in the front? You know what I'm saying? I'm same thing like you felt. I'm too cute to be having my teeth jacked up. That's that's what made me go to the dentist and that's what made me pay my money because I feel like I'm too motherfucking cute to be walking around with a raggedy ass mouth. You know what I'm saying? So I'd rather go in a dentist, sit in his chair and let him fix my teeth than walk around in public and have my teeth jacked up and people be talking about me behind my back or to my face. Like it's so hurtful to me when people would say mean things about my teeth you know what i'm saying like people don't have money that grow on trees just to just go out and get their teeth fixed it's a process and like i sometimes would get really jealous and or envious of people that had their teeth really white or their teeth really fixed nicely i you know those type of things really bother me and like a lot of times people would say to me well if you could get like some type of plastic surgery what would you get done first my teeth my teeth, because that's the first thing a person see. I could care if my titties were sagging to the floor, which they not, but I'm just saying. I could care less if my ass was flat as the fucking wall, which it ain't, but I'm just saying. Or if my stomach was a little bit kangaroo kangaroo pouch, which it is, but so what? You know what I'm saying? The first thing that I wanted to do was get my teeth done. Like, I'm going to get my teeth fixed. Fuck everything else and what everybody else does. Then I'm going to go get my eyes done. You know what I'm saying? But that's in another video. But that that's how I got over it. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to be walking around with no fungus in my mouth, no infection, no funky-ass breath, no raggedy-ass teeth for people to be laughing at me. You can laugh at me on my way to the dentist, but other than that, I'm not about to stand around. I had wanted to get my teeth fixed for years, okay? For years. And all I would hear people say is, your teeth are cute. People love people with gaps. Men love women with gaps. Or like in other countries, a gap is considered like something really sexy. Well, I don't give a shit about none of that shit. Okay, what I want is for myself. So I did it for me, basically, because I didn't feel like I was pretty enough with my teeth like that. And also, I was tired of going to the store buying aspirins and, and rubbing shit on my gums because I was in so much agonizing pain that I could not sleep. You know what I'm saying? And that's the worst feeling in the world is to have a toothache. So I really would advise you, Kelly, to take your ass to the dentist, okay? And you and try out one of those programs. If you know what I'm saying? You need help to find one, then you could email me and I'll be more than happy to find one to help you because I totally understand how it is. You know, some people are born with like the best of teeth from just care, you know what I'm saying, with good dental care. But there's a lot of us that our parents weren't fortunate enough to do that for us. So, you know, it's unfortunate that we have to go through life like this. But having a toothache is, I'd rather have a baby. Honestly, I'd rather be in labor pain. So, you know, if anybody else has any type of, you know what I'm saying, dental advice, leave your comments below for Kelly. I'm pretty sure she would love to hear about it because it's serious. It's 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 kind of jacked up, though, because the dentist is so expensive, you know what I'm saying? And it's like not really that much good insurance out there for dental care. And it seems like, you know, you always have to pay a lot. You have to wait too long for an appointment. It's just the dentist is like a... a a, a a thing where it's like you sometimes have to be like like really on like good terms with life in general just to be able to afford like the proper care like i remember looking at like this old rupaul drag race um show um series season and it had to be like the second or third season and um you see these people, these the drag queens, and their teeth are disgusting. Like they were so yellow and just like so nasty and their makeup was bad too, but more so their teeth. And it was like the camera would zoom in and then I would look at like other old things and it was like, damn, back then, like people really didn't care too much about their teeth. It seemed like, you know, like maybe like 10, 12, 15 years ago, the dentist wasn't like so popping like it is now with the fake teeth or the crowns. And you know, people would get crowns and stuff, but it wasn't like it is now. They get those stupid ass gold teeth ones. I hate those shit. But you know what I'm saying? So it's like teeth are like really important. Like I will spend money on my fucking teeth before anything. Like for real. Cause I do not want to go through that pain. I be telling my kids that all the time. 
And I make sure to take their ass to the dentist too because, listen, I don't want anybody to go through what I have gone through. And you're only 35. And, like, from your picture that you sent me, I only see the top row and they look nice, sweetheart. Let's listen. Take it from me. Don't prolong the shit, okay? The next thing, the next plan that I'm going to get with my dentist is for my bottom teeth to get done because they're spacing out. It's because I've had extractions. And some people are lucky to where when they get their teeth pulled, their other teeth don't shift. They don't move. And then there's people like me who never have no motherfucking good luck. And whenever you pull out a tooth, they all fucking want to move, okay? Like, I'm about to have gaps down here because of the extraction. So, you know, I'm going to get them. I'm going to get my teeth in the front. They're going to be crowned, too. So then, you know, it might not be the perfect, perfect, perfect smile, but it'll be perfect for me. So, you know, and I like these shits. So, like, hey. So we're going to move on to the next one. Okay. So here we go. And she titled the shit for me, too. They think I'm a housemaid. With a sad face. Now listen, they think I'm a housemaid, bitch. Who, girl, you preaching to the choir, sweetheart, sweetie pie? Hello, bitch. Uh, hello, I'm right here too. I be just saying, look, I, you know what I say when people when, when I feel like I they think I'm the housemaid around here, I be like, I don't motherfuckers work for y'all asses. I ain't the married maid service. That's the first thing that come out of my mouth. But I'm gonna read this email. Hello, Miss Diva. Let me start off by saying, girl, I love your channel. Especially enjoy watching Real Talk Wednesday. You have me cracking up. You're always like, let me tell you something. That's like a habit of mine. Okay, so I have a situation. I'm 22 years old, married, and five months pregnant. My husband and I are currently living at his parents while our new home gets remodeled. Anyways, the problem is this. The living, <clears throat> the living situation at my in-law's house. This is the problem. My mother-in-law has been out of the country for almost a year. So the dad, 12-year-old sister, my brother and sister-in-law, and of course my husband and I are in this house living together. The problem is this. No one cleans besides me. Literally no one. If I don't pick up the trash or do the dishes, it just won't get done. My husband sometimes helps me, but that's only when the house has been messy all weekend or something. And girl, I'm not about to bust my ass every day, washing all the dishes and making dinner. My mother-in-law used to do everything for the family, like pick up after everyone. But girl, I am not a maid. They leave food out all night long, dishes won't be washed, and bags of trash everywhere. It boils my blood having to tell the 12-year-old to pick up her trash after eating. Like, come on, it's common sense. They also have a dog who poops everywhere and they leave it. Just like ignore it, okay? I believe the 12-year-old should help me out more, especially since I'm pregnant and my back starts hurting. She wanted the dog so she should so she should clean up after it. She leaves her bags, clothes, shoes in the living room. I have to tell her every day to pick up after the dog and to put her stuff in her room. One time she got so comfortable with me and said, I know I don't have to clean up because you'll do it. Wait, hold up. The 12 year old got so comfortable with me and said, I know I don't have to clean up because you'll do it. And when I told her mom and my husband, they both said it's because she's young. Oh no. I have told her and I have to tell her like three to four times to pick something up. I feel like she's just ignoring, I feel like just ignoring her whenever she needs a ride. Just how she ignores me, but ugh, that's childish of me, right, April? I don't know what to do. I'm exhausted having to tell her every day to clean up something, and I don't want to be the only one cleaning. Am I doing too much by expecting the 12 year old to help me clean? And yes, everyone else in the house should clean too, but they're grown, and I'm not going to tell them anything. Since we're not paying rent while being here, my husband says the least I can do is make dinner and clean a little, but it feels more like I'm a housemaid. So she didn't put her name, so we're going to call her um, Nikki. So Nikki, let me tell you something, sweetheart. Girlfriend, like I said, you are preaching to the choir. Excuse my raspy voice, but you are, because I've been yelling, okay, at a motherfucking 20-year-old who think I'm the goddamn housemaid, all right? Let me tell y'all. Let me tell you something. Let me just tell y'all. Let me tell you something real quick. I, we're going to get real close. 
I know exactly what the fuck you coming from or what the fuck you mean. That's the same shit that's how I be feeling around here. Every night before I go to sleep, like around one o'clock in the morning, I got to pick up something. I got to clean something. I got to tell you guys to keep putting your shoes in the shoe box, that basket. I don't want to see your shoes all over. Pick up your coat. Pick up your jacket. Come pick up your arts and crap, okay? You see a piece of tissue on the floor, pick it up. Like, could you clean up after yourself? Pick up after your kid. Do this, do that. Clean the bathroom. That's your bathroom. You use it. Clean your nasty ass room. This is me, okay? All the time. And let me tell you something. I'm not OCD for cleaning, but I will say this. I am not about to live in filth, okay? And I damn sure ain't about to be nobody's motherfucking maid around this bitch, okay? I'm not about to live with no type of bugs, roaches, ants, nothing. I'm, I don't want that in my motherfucking house neither. And it's it's unfortunate because, you know what, I try to be nice April, meaning the new April, the new um, evolved April, the new renovated April, okay? You know what I'm saying? Because I be renovated, you know what I'm saying? My attitude has become a lot nicer. So I've been told by my kids that since we moved here, I'm a nicer person. And I like to be told that I'm a nicer person. But then when you've been told that you're a nicer person, that means that they just walking all over you. So then that's when authentic April has to come the fuck out. Okay. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, I try to be nice April. And I try to be nice April all the time. But it seems like when I'm nice April and I'm trying just to be fair and say, could you please clean up your room? Could you please up that bathroom? It doesn't seem like it affects anybody and it doesn't go through the ears. So what ends up happening on my part in my home is this. April be up on a Sunday or a Saturday and everybody is there at this time. And I'm picking up something and then it starts bothering April because in reality, authentic April wants to go upstairs and take a shower, do her makeup, and do a video or two, and be about her day. But when I see the mess that's left behind, I have to stop doing what I really want to do and go do some shit that I don't want to do. And then that's when it starts boiling up inside of me. And then that's when April starts talking real loud and opening up doors and going off on everyone. That's what April does. But then when, you know, Fake ass April, because that's what she is, not even nice April. Fake ass April is in town. You know, she invites them all downstairs for a family meeting or whatever you want to call it. I don't know if you want to call it a family meeting, because that sounds like some corny shit to me. Like, you know, let's get together, guys. We're going to talk this over, you know. And it's not we're going to talk it over. I'm going to talk and you're going to fucking listen. And when I'm done, you're going to do what the fuck I say. That's my version of a family meeting. So I don't know if you want to call it a family meeting because we're not even meeting. Normally meetings are kind of like good out in a sense. So basically it's fake ass April trying to be sparingly to you, meaning spare your feelings before authentic April just pops on and comes into town. Nobody likes for her to be in town. Okay. She shunned a lot. People be dubbing her, okay? They don't really like her too much. And so I invite them down into my living room because I call that one living room mine because ain't no motherfucking toys in there or nobody lounging around on my shit, my new furniture. And I have a nice conversation with them about certain shit that needs to be done. And it seems like when I do that, it takes very long for the shit to get done or it doesn't get done the proper way. And then after a while, April gets tired of hearing that, hearing that, meaning hearing herself say the same shit. And April just does what she normally does. She'll either spaz off, come on, sit still, or she'll start throwing people's shit away. Now you have to go, go, just go, 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 just go. Okay. Or, or I'll start throwing people shit out. And trust me when I tell you, none of this shit being thrown out is mine because it's always put the fuck away. And if I told you several times to put the fuck away and you didn't, that means you don't want it. And I'm going to throw it in the trash. Now, just like that 12 year old girl, you damn right. She should be helping you clean the fuck up. Mumsy is 11. You best believe she can clean up. Um, she'd be sleeping in my room with me every day and she make the bed up in the morning because you sleep in it. This is my bed, but you in here as a guest. So being that you in my room as a guest, clean up your mess and make the bed up. 
I make sure to tell her to clean her stuff up. You know, I have to tell her too. pick up your crafts. Why are you leaving your crafts there? I don't care if you put it in a pot. I don't want it in the dining room floor. Put it somewhere else. Put it out of eyes view. Stop leaving shit around the house. I get tired of it. I understand how you are feeling. And sometimes we cannot always spaz off, especially if they ain't our kids and your father-in-law and your sister-in-law and stuff. Those aren't your children. So you're definitely going to have to have a family meeting, like a real family meeting, meaning you're not going to be able to spaz out like how I can. I mean, you can if you want to, but you might be kicked to the curb, honey. So let's not do that. What I'm suggesting to you, Nikki, is this. Get the family together because you're pregnant and it's not fair to you to be picking up everybody else's shit. You're not the fucking maid. You're right. I hate when people feel like you could just leave whatever and not clean up after yourself. That shit irritates me, especially if you a grown ass motherfucker. And even if you ain't a grown ass motherfucker, but you 12 years old, you best believe you need to pick up after yourself because you know better than that. We as 12 year olds, or if I was a 12 year old, you would know that you need to pick up your shit off the fucking floor. You know your mother didn't raise you to fucking leave your shit all over the goddamn place for somebody else to pick up. And this little motherfucking girl's talking about, I know I don't got to pick it up because you're going to do it. Basically, bitch, she's telling you, well, you going to do it because you've been doing it and I ain't going to do it. So that means that she's doing it purposely because she just told you that she knows that you're going to pick the shit up, but she's not going to because you're going to. Let me tell you something. She 12, not 12 months. Okay. That means that her little lazy ass can get the fuck up and clean up and pick her shit up unless she wants it by the garbage can. All right. Because if you keep leaving your shit on the floor, it's going to get trampled on or it's going to get broken. And then it's definitely going to end up in the garbage can. Let me tell you, let me tell you something. You need to get that family together. And I understand that you're a guest in a home, but just because you're a fucking guest in someone's home does not mean that you have to be trampled on and used and fucking abused. All right. I know that for a fact. Just because you're in someone's home as a guest does not mean that they can take advantage of you and abuse you. Bottom line, straight up, cool, you don't pay no rent. That's great, but she does make dinner every day, all right? However, she's not the motherfucking maid. She makes dinner, maybe even wash the dishes, but she don't have to be cleaning up everybody's mess. You shouldn't have to clean up anyone's mess except for your own, okay? Except for your own. Make dinner for the family. That's great. But listen, sweetheart, you need to get that family together and let them know I'm pregnant. And as we are all old enough and capable, I think that we all should clean up after ourselves, not leave trash around, garbage. Let them know. Do you want to live with roaches and garbage and, 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 and rodents? Because if you don't, then I suggest that you choose what to pick up or I just suggest you choose to pick things up. You know what I'm saying? And as for the dog's shit on the floor, that's just disgusting. And she needs to learn how to take care of that little dog. If she doesn't know how to take care of the dog, then I would highly suggest you talking to her father. Because the dog, if the dog is shitting, that means the dog is pissing on the floor too. And regardless if you have rugs or if they have car um, um if they have carpeting or if they have throw rugs or if they have hardwood floors or or, or tiling, eventually over time. That dog's urine and feces is going to ruin the floors or the carpeting, especially if they're not cleaning it up. And the feces, maybe not so much because it's solid, and you, but you'll step in it, and that'll be pissed off. You'll, you'll be pissed off from that, you know what I'm saying? So I would highly suggest. And then on top of that, if it's in the rug, what's going to happen is someone's going to come into your home, and it's going to smell disgusting. That's the one thing that I'm always paranoid about is like the dog going to the bathroom in my rug. And whenever I see that, I'm like a fucking, oh, that's when I'm really OCD when it comes to like the dog peeing on my rug by accident. I get fucking vinegar and I pour it and then I get the baking soda and I let the baking soda soak up the vinegar and the urine and the wetness. And, you know, you'll see that the baking soda soaks it up because it turns yellow you know, and I let it dry up and it gets hard. I mean, and like normally you could brush it up or vacuum it up the next day, but I'll let that shit sit there for like two days because I'm just so paranoid. And you never can tell that, you know what I'm saying? When you come to my home, you can never smell animal urine if she's went to the bathroom. Cause you know this, I've had dogs before, but I hate dirt 
Like I cannot be in someone's home and they have like a disgusting bathroom or kitchen. Just leave me outside. I'll just wait for you outside, okay? Because I'm I'm scary and I'm scared of roaches. Like I don't like roaches, so I feel like that they'll crawl on me and go in my bag or something, and then they'll come in my house and then they'll just like mate or just like reproduce somehow, some way. And oh, once you have a roaches, you cannot get rid of them. So yes. If they want roaches, tell them then they can keep on continuing on their behavior. However, sweetheart, I would not continuously, continuously, continuously pick up and clean up after grown ass adults and 12 year olds. That little girl is just fucking fresh. She lucky she was my kid because I smack her fucking lips off. But, you know, that's not my kid and that's not my place to say. But I definitely will let her know you better pick up after that dog and you better clean up. You made the mess. Now you can clean it up. Have a family meeting. For real, Nikki, that's the only thing I could tell you unless you're ready to leave. And if you're not ready to leave yet and your home is not finished and you don't have anywhere else to go, then I would highly suggest that you have a family meeting with them and let them know how this is wearing and tearing on you. And I think like as a family unit, we should all come together and help keep the home clean. Let's not depreciate the value of the home. You got to throw in little things like that sometimes to people because if you just say, oh, well, let's just keep the home clean together or let's do this as a family, they'll just look at you and be like, mm. But if you tell them shit like, well, you don't want it to depreciate the value of the home. You don't want to get roaches because once you get a roach, you're, they're, they're hard to get rid of. You don't want to get rodents and bugs like that. You know what I'm saying? And then they get in your ear and nostrils while you sleep. Like You have to tell people things like that sometimes because... McNasties are McNasties, okay? That's what they're called. There was a family that used to live right next door. Well, not next door, but a few apartment doors down in the projects with me. And they were they were trashy. Um, they were just a dirty, trashy ass family. Oh, they were disgusting. Greasy hair. They was not black. They was white people. But it was like they was having incest incest with each other. It's some weird old shit going on. But we would call them the McNasties because they were so nasty and dirty. So my aunt made up the term and called them the McNasties, and that was what their name was. So we would refer to them as the McNasties, not to their face, but, you know, behind their back, you know, we was talking shit about them, okay? But that's what I call McNasties, when you live with garbage rubbles in your home and shit like that, like, not cool at all. Definitely, definitely not cool. So I would definitely have a conversation with them and let them know, like, listen, <laughs> let's come together as a unit and work on this home together because the depreciation is going to go down and what's going to happen is it's going to get infested with bugs and once you have bugs and roaches they're very hard to get and also they do become very expensive or girl hurry up and find you a place to stay go stay with some family members but you know that's not really your blood family and sometimes that's what makes it so hard because these are not your relatives so it's like okay what am i supposed to do but you know just take it from me I ain't no fucking maid neither. I hate that shit. I know you ready to spaz off. Man, you know what I would do? I would take all that shit that they left around and throw that shit right on their floor in their room. Or put it all in one big pile and leave it right in the middle of the floor. Then they gonna walk by that shit and be like, why am I stuffing here? Why am I stuffing here? Well, it was over there on that side of the floor. You didn't pick it up. So I figured you guys can all see y'all stuff together and get it up. So, you guys, on that note, I'm going to go. I got some things to do, you know. Um, that was This was a real quick, real talk. I feel like I'm cheating, y'all. I, like, really feel like I'm shitting on y'all for some reason. But I'm not. So, I love you. And I will see you guys in the soon-to-come video. You know what I'm saying? Um, I still cannot remember what I was about to tell y'all. But, you know. Hey. I'll share with you guys next week. Mm-hmm. Uh, 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 u